Thank you all now. We'll now be getting our five minute rounds of questions for each member. And I'm going to begin and off, start for myself. And to everyone that I'm gonna be asking the questions, please recognize that I only have five minutes and I'd like to get to three different uh, questions. So uh, here we go. Uh, Mr. Alonzo, as Pennsylvania's Lieutenant Governor, I became very familiar with the Commonwealth's robust mushroom industry. And Chris, it's called the mushroom capital of the world, right? Yeah. It's remarkable when you realize that it's about 60% of the comes from right there in uh, that part in Pennsylvania. And uh, I know there's very specific kinds and particular challenges that you face. So, but we considered this year's farm bill and insurance for specialty crops. What would you like us to know about unique risks that are associated to with mushroom production? So we grow indoors, although most of the process starts outdoors. We have all of our byproducts. So the compost we make is great nutrition for the mushrooms, but that means other funguses, other pathogens want to uh, get to that food as well. So we're unique in that we need um, some attention for that uh, crop where we could have a huge disaster by being so specific in what we do and we're unique to any other crop because mushrooms don't need sunlight. Uh, and that along with, um, you know, the fact that uh, other pathogens really want to get in there. Yeah, so, and I'm gonna ask a question, it's kind of like a little a little off it, but, uh, but I've been uh, an advocate of psychedelics in terms of the magic mushrooms for, for PSTDs, uh, uh, and uh, for veterans especially. And I always thought, what an it could be, and maybe I'm wrong, an amazing uh, economic kind of boom for the mushroom, whereas the, for the, the, the world uh, producer now, uh, and I think it could uh, uh, be a, a revolution in me mental, mental health uh, is, is on that. Are you open to thinking of that, or is this something that would be like, no, 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 I, I, I'm not anything? We are absolutely open, we're entrepreneurs, but more importantly, we're trying to create healthy food for the community, for the, for the US. And when we look at it, mushroom mycelium goes into products like furniture and uh, oil, uh, soaking up oil. And um, the nutrition side of mushrooms, we got through research through USDA with the Mushroom Council. So anything that ties in health benefits, medical uh, benefits, uh, we're open to looking at. Obviously, you have to do it within parameters of being uh, secure and safe and and uh, respect responsible. But yeah. we're open to it. I, I think we should have more research and and microdosing and other issues. I think is is essential. But thank you for for that. Uh, moving over to Ms. Dioma and uh, Kobus. Um, you know, certifying agents are leaders in implementing the USDA organic standards. And I know how crucial it is that standards are for certified organic producers. You know, how can the USDA be more ensuring that the ingredient regulations are uniformly and consistently applied? The USDA can take ownership of developing a program and certifying all organic inspectors under a standard such as ISO 17024, very similar to the program for food safety auditors and the need that arose in that industry. Um, organic is uh, an industry that has really grown up now and we need to professionalize some of these careers in order to maintain and grow the industry. Thank you. And Dr. Worthington, I'm interested in your research as it relates to a specific issue in Pennsylvania, the spotted lanifi. I relish stomping on them personally. They, they, have, a, they have a satisfying crunch when they go. But, but anecdotally, they seem like they really are f really starting to spread even more and more in Pennsylvania. For year, a couple of years ago, I never would have seen one in Western Pennsylvania. And, and now I see them much more so for just a few years later. So, um, uh, and I just, you know, do you have any technologies or, that you discussed in your opening statement about protecting crops from this and other pests? Do you have any more uh, advice, any kinds of thing about it? 
Well, I, in Arkansas, have not had the opportunity to crunch a spotted lantern fly yet because we don't have them yet in our state. But I'm aware, yes, <laughs> I'm aware that they are a major problem, especially in the Northeast U.S., and they're growing in their range, and they affect a wide range of specialty crops, and many of which I work on, including grapes and peaches. So it's something I've got my eye on for sure. I think any approach to managing spotted spotted lanternfly is going to be really interdisciplinary. I imagine you'll see proposals coming through the Specialty Crops Research Initiative to tackle this pest. I'm not aware of any specific disease or I mean, it would be an insect resistance gene that could be deployed right now for resistance to spotted lanternfly. However, I think it's important to make it possible to create these technologies in a fast way. You know, if we found it in a wild relative now, an insect resistance gene for spotted lanternfly, it could take us 20 to 80 years to get it into elite plant material, and it could be done much, much faster using precise tools like gene editing. So I encourage the committee to consider making science-based regulations that would enable us to tackle these problems quickly. Thank you. And, uh, Dodge, I recognize Senator Brown. <laughs> 